Well, here it is, the last pile of stuff for the tail of the airplane. So that's pretty exciting, just moving on. Got all this stuff here for the skeleton. All the skins are up there on the shelf. And uh, everything else stacked on the shelf for finished pieces. Getting near the end, it's pretty exciting. All right, let's finish building the tail of this airplane. If you're new to the channel, I'm in the process of building this experimental airplane in my garage. It's the RV-14, which is designed and sold as a kit by the Vans Aircraft Corporation. In previous videos, I've documented the completion of all the control surfaces for the tail of the airplane, which include the vertical stabilizer, the rudder, the horizontal stabilizer, and the elevator. And now, I'm starting construction of the aft fuselage section to which all of these components will connect. Essentially, this part of the airplane is made up of a series of bulkheads connected by stiffeners and longerons, and then covered in several skins to complete the structure. This video will cover what I like to call the grunt work of the build for each section of the airplane. This includes cutting and shaping parts, smoothing and deburring edges, the initial assembly and test fitting of components to match drill or final drill holes, and then disassembly of everything to prep all parts for priming before things get riveted together. A couple of parts require a good bit of fabrication. The first one is this horizontal stabilizer attach bar support angle. It comes as just a rectangular piece of aluminum angle, but as you can see from the diagram, it needs a bit of modification. Looking at it from the top down view, the sides need to be trimmed and then from the front view I need to take some measurements to be able to cut out this angle. The other part again starts as a single piece of angle which needs multiple detailed cuts in order to produce two identical rudder stops. It's important to really take your time to fully study the views before marking and cutting to end up with the right result. So after carefully making all of these detailed cuts and trying not to lose a finger in the process, I can compare the final product with the plans. And I'm happy to see that they all match up. In this instance, the scale of the plans exactly matches the actual size of the parts, which made for a great cross check against my measurements. Trying to be a little more efficient, I scan ahead through the instructions to find other parts which need to be cut or drilled to try to get most of that done in one session. So next I separate two bell crank ribs from a single piece and then remove a good bit of material from the sides of the aft bottom skin. All right, so I've gone through and pretty much found all the parts that needed to be separated or trimmed or had pieces removed on those. Those are done. So now it's time to deburr all the edges. It is what it is. So I'm happy to say I finally get this mountain of deburring complete so I can move on to the initial assembly of the aft fuselage section. Um, no kidding, this is about eight hours worth of deburring parts, so just for your planning purposes, um, especially when you have a lot of these small little indentations and stuff, um, little edges like that, it takes a long time to get into all of that stuff, so definitely my least favorite part of the entire building process, um, but 
Good news is that's all done now. I still do have all these skins that have to get their edges done, but that's not as, as bad. It's not as labor intensive. It's, it's all these little spots that are really tough. So those I'll do when I get to the part where I'm actually gonna start working with the skins and that's a good bit off. So um, a little bit different in the plans for the aft fuselage section and with all the other pieces, um, it was kind of like one big assembly where you kind of got everything together, almost completely clicoed together, had everything match drilled where needed and then kind of disassembled, primed and put it all together. With this one, it's a little bit different in that there's a lot of sub assemblies to it. So um, what I'll be doing for this one in order to hopefully not have to prime too many cycles um, is I'll do a lot of these sub assemblies up to the point where those components would be riveted together as a sub assembly. And then I'll stop there and I'll move on to the next one and I'll keep doing that until I've got a large group of those that kind of need to be riveted together to then start assembling the whole thing. Uh, and I'll pause, prime all that stuff, and then go ahead and rivet all that together. Um, so I'm thinking it's probably gonna be at least two priming batches to get this done. Um, I don't think it's possible to kind of get all this to a point where you can then disassemble everything and prime it all at once. I just don't think it's feasible the way it all goes together, but we'll see how it goes. I have really no idea what I'm doing, so we'll find out. So anyway, um, moving on, we'll see how it goes. With most of the internal parts shaped and deburred, I get to move on to the initial assembly and match drilling of parts. This begins with attaching a couple of bulkheads to the rear spar of the very first part of the airplane that I built, the vertical stabilizer. So this is kind of fun, because in this first step, basically what we're doing is pulling out the vertical stabilizer, the first component of the aircraft that we built, and we're using that as a guide to basically line up this bracket, which is the first part we're going to build on the aft fuselage. But this bracket is where this aft spar is going to attach to the aircraft. In this first step, basically, I'm just clicking these two components to the aft spar in two spots. We'll match drill some holes there and some holes in a couple other places into the spar itself to then eventually connect this whole piece. And also on that is this little guy, which is gonna mount here, and that is actually gonna have a tie-down ring attached to it. This will be my tail tie-down for uh, tying down the tail of the airplane. So cool. It's all starting to come together. So this bulkhead is clicked to the rear spar, and then several holes are drilled. Among these are some bolt holes which actually go through the tie-down bracket and will eventually house bolts which will connect the vertical stabilizer to the tail of the airplane. Next, I countersink some of the other holes in the tie-down bracket where it will be riveted to the bulkhead. And also dimple holes in the bulkhead to match those along with a lot of other holes, which are used to rivet the two halves of the bulkhead together. All right, well that completes the first little sub component, if you will. So all this stuff here is gonna get riveted together, but it's gotta get primed first. So basically I'll set this whole component aside and then move on to several other rib structures that look kind of like this throughout the tail. And then once I've got a bunch of those, I'll take them all apart and prime them and rivet it all together. Cool. The next bulkhead has attach bars for the horizontal stabilizer. These get clicoed to the halves of the bulkhead and then final drilled to the right size. With all that done, I pull things back apart to dimple the holes in the flanges 
where the skins will attach. The first step for this next bulkhead is to use a step drill to upsize a hole, which will be used later to pass some systems wires through. Sadly, my arm gets in the way a good bit in this clip, so sorry about that. After I dimpled the flanges in this bulkhead that I just drilled, I took a slight detour from the plans for a minute to do a little test fitting with some of the bulkheads and the aft bottom skin just to kind of see how it all lined up, and also because I'm having fun. Okay, back to work. This bulkhead has some attached bars for the horizontal stabilizer, so I need to drill out a couple of bolt holes in these. before they get clecoed to the bulkhead along with some other doublers. And then it all gets match drilled. The next two bulkheads are made from two large halves. Prep for these involves dimpling the flanges. And a couple of holes where the two halves will actually connect to each other. The bottom of this bulkhead gets modified a little by first enlarging a small hole with a step drill. and then removing the excess material. This creates a curved cutout as shown in the plans. This part is then completed by joining the two halves together with a rudder cable bracket and then adding some stiffener clips to the backside. The next bulkhead assembly consists of some battery angles, the bell crank ribs, and a bulkhead. The battery angles will have several nut plates attached, so these need to be countersunk. The ribs have their flanges dimpled. and then several holes are dimpled into the bulkhead as well. And finally, the whole thing gets clicked together. Well, I think I've reached the point in the instructions now where all of these bulkheads pretty much need to get riveted together in order to kind of continue on the process. So what I'm going to do here uh, is kind of pause with all of these items, get them primed, prepped and primed, and, uh, and then I'll rivet those together. And then I can pick up in the instructions from there. Because kind of what happens next is you've got all these bulkheads that are going to start to get assembled with their stringers um, to start shaping out the tail of the airplane and getting the skins attached to that. And in order to move on with that step, um, I've got to get all these Clecos out of the way. So I'll go ahead and get these prepped and primed and then we'll get them riveted together and then move on from there in the instructions. So after taking a closer look forward in the plans, I determined that I could actually continue moving forward prepping all of the other parts, including the skins, so that I'll be able to prime all of the parts at once and then move on to riveting everything together. 
A combination of J stiffeners and some longerons will be used to internally bridge the gap between the bulkheads and complete the internal skeleton of the tail section. So next up, I move on to dimpling all of those holes as appropriate. The aft deck is comprised of a top frame for the skin, the deck angle, a doubler, the horizontal stabilizer attach bar angle, and the deck itself. So my next steps involve dimpling these parts as called out in the plans. And then clecoing it all together for a test fit. The aft bottom skin has some holes that need to be final sized. And then I move on to dimpling all the other holes where this will rivet to the underlying bulkheads. Finally, it's time to start deburring and then dimpling the pretty large pile of skins that I have sitting on the shelf. I begin here with the bottom skin. I'll spare you from watching me do all of them because it looks pretty much like this. I'll end things here for this video and pick up in the next one with all of the remaining deburring, dimpling, prep, and priming complete. And pick up with the really fun part, riveting everything together. I hope you're enjoying the videos and, if you're actually building, that you're finding the information useful. Don't forget to hit the like button to help support the channel, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, thank you so very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.